Karen's pied a terre take 16. My name is Robert Frank and I am your narrator, tour guide, and Karen's current number one romantic interest other than this little dog named Kashmir who she likes more than she likes me right now. And I should have guessed that because now when we go on a trip, I have to sit in the back seat and the dog gets to sit up front, which is okay because Karen also got herself a new car and the back seat isn't that bad. That's not the new car, by the way. And the back seat in the new car isn't that bad, except when the seats get folded down and you have to kind of squat there and hold on to the headrest of one of the front seats in order to balance yourself. That's, that's tough sometimes. But that's all right, because the dog likes Karen more than the dog likes me anyway. Because I always yell at him when he grabs my sandals and hides them under the bed where I can't reach them or poops on the rug or does other things. And I yell at him and Karen doesn't yell at him, but I'm, I digress. Let me move on. First, I will set the stage, so to speak. We live about halfway between Raleigh, North Carolina and Durham, North Carolina, near Route 70, which runs between those two cities and near the outer ring around Raleigh. Raleigh has an inner ring and an outer ring, just like Moscow in Russia, except Moscow has the KGB and the Kremlin and Lenin's tomb and the barrier purges and those really neat Russian Orthodox churches with the golden onion domes and the Battle of Stalingrad and Raleigh has the Crabtree Mall. It's just not quite the same, but nevertheless, we've got two rings around Raleigh and the outer ring, Route 540, and 70 between Raleigh and Durham intersect and we're very near that. And we are about, geographically speaking, 12 to 15 minutes away from the Raleigh-Durham airport, which is, or could be, very convenient if for some unexplained reason I have to leave the country under, let's say, let's call it awkward circumstances. Kind of like Matt Damon in The Born Ultimatum. Cool. And it's a really neat airport, and, and we're only about 12 miles away, which is a lot different than being in Denver and having to go 50 minutes each way back and forth to the Denver airport. And you drive there, and if your person that you're picking up, their flight is like you have to drive around and around, and if you stop, the traffic guy says, if you're here for more than 30 seconds, even though I have handicapped plates, we're going to arrest you and impound your car and make you walk back to Highlands Ranch, and that'll take you two days. Man, none of that here. It's really nice. We have a really nice airport, and we're really close, but we have a really small house. It's about half the size of the place we had in Colorado. But we're starting outside with a picture of my old car. We had to get rid of the BMW and the Mini because we don't have any room. So I just have an old car. And I, when, when, when I get to drive that, I get to sit in the front seat. So before we do that, um, we're going to swing around and show 
the neighborhood. We live on Crooked Tree Lane, Crooked Tree Lane, which goes from there whoa, to there. That's it. That's our street. But in the middle is this wonderful gazebo and, and up in, in, in a circle. We live on a circle and it's the gazebo and all the trees and everything are all lit up at night and people come by and they walk their dogs. There's tons of dogs and um, people come to the gazebo to get their free doggy bags from over there and talk to each other and walk the dogs and it's really cool. And there's down the street that way and there's down the street that way. And did I say we're only 12 miles from the airport? Cool, an escape route. I think I said that already. So now we'll go back and we'll start the tour. Um, I'm walking now toward the house. Oh, we have our own mailbox right there. And you don't need a key, which you always lose. So you can, you can get your mail anytime you want. So I am now walking, walking, it's still hard. I am walking up toward the house. Here we go. And, and we're going from the car up the front steps. And there's the Virginia plant that made the transition. That was the plant that people gave us the day that Virginia was born and it's lived ever since, which is really cool. Now, and I have to put that somewhere, but I'll explain later the problems. Okay, so you walk up the front door and, oh, you'll see some roses here. There are roses everywhere. Everybody has roses. You'll see more of them. We're walking now up the front door, towards the front door. We're going in. Whoa, man, we are right at the front door. We are going in and trying not to let the dog out. All right. I am now inside. <clears throat> Normally, when you walk in a house, to your right is a formal dining room. We don't have a formal dining room. We have a closet. Like I said, it's a small house, but we do have this very cool, look at that, this very cool umbrella stand that we picked up during our last trip to London. It's got a mirror. It's got places for umbrellas. Uh, it's got places where you can hang your bowler hat if you have a bowler hat. It was once owned by Winston Churchill but we found it on Canberry Street in the West End of London, and now it's mine. So if you walk in the front door, which we just did, you get a closet. Here's the closet. Yay. No dining room. And if you keep walking, oh, there's one of our cots. We hung a cot. I'll give you a better picture of that. Virginia gave us these prints, she gave us that cot which I hung and that cot which I hung. And we'll go that direction later. So if you walk in the front door and you go to the right, you come to the still too cluttered kitchen. But you walk in and it doesn't have an island, but that's all right. And it's got these really neat shutter bay windows that look out wow on the gazebo which is all lit up at night and you can see the people and you can always be on the lookout for women walking by walking their dogs wearing low cut summer sundresses always have to be on the alert for that. 
Oh, there's my old car again. So I am now right in the bay window in the kitchen, which is to the left of when you come in. And oops, it's not all in focus yet. It's supposed to autofocus. We'll go back there. We don't have an island, but we have really nice oak floors. And here's the kitchen and some of the stuff in the kitchen. And if you walk straight back from the front door, you get, you get uh, a view of the interior of the house. And you're walking past the kitchen. We've got our table right here. We've got some chairs with our little counter there and our main living area, well, sort of, which is we're going straight back now from the front door, north to south, you've got our living room area. Let me see if I can get a better shot. I'll back up a bit. And we have our Eventoff paintings up and we have our old sofa and we have our Rauschenberg a girl with a bicycle over the mantel and a Chinese gong, uh, three Eventoffs, two, and the one there. And we've got our marble vase, which got broken. You can see the little piece and I have to fix that. And if you keep going straight back, straight back, you come to the sunroom, which is where I'm supposed to hang out uh, most of the time. I need permission to be in other parts of the house, but this, this, this is this is a nice little sunroom. It's again, it's got shutters. It's the world's smallest sunroom, but that's okay because it leads out onto. I'm going back onto a. Whoa, that's a plant. That's a plant. Okay. The backyard. So you come in the front and you go straight back to the backyard and that's for the hummingbirds. We've got hummingbirds here and we have a very small patio which you can see. And we bought ourselves an umbrella and there's St. Francis. It's about 15, 20 feet around. And we have a small backyard you can see and it goes that way and it goes that way and beyond that we have lots of trees and bushes and that's sawgrass but I, I think that's dead but I, I got to check with with the homeowners association and like he said roses everywhere if you can see those roses they're just there's like 120 roses right here, and some in front, and all the neighbors have roses. And um, you, you pay a not inconsiderable sum to the homeowners association, and they have a guy come around, and he mows everybody's lawn and edges and trims and runs your irrigation system, and they're very strict. You have to have permission in advance before you as much as plant anything of your own in the ground like a tree or a bush or a plant uh, so it's 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 a highly controlled environment but that's all right because somebody else mows the lawn and that means that i don't have to and there's there's a neighbor's house and here is there's the things for the hummingbirds again. There's the door. There's, whoops. There's the back of the house. There's St. Francis. And now we're going back inside. So we go back inside the house. Well, oh. now we are back in the sunroom. It's a little messy. I still have a whole lot to do. 
we don't have, for example, a light in here. Um, we bought the house from a guy who's 94 years old and he has a new girlfriend and he had a couple of places that he uh, owned here in Raleigh and he's selling him and he and his girlfriend are moving to Myrtle Beach. So we got a halfway decent price on the house. Now we're in the back and now we're looking forward. Again, the front door and you can see the unbelievable umbrella stand and you can see the closet uh, and no formal dining room, just the closet, but that's all right. Now we're looking toward the front of the house and you can see all the light coming in the bay windows looking out onto the uh, gazebo and all the dogs and, and all the cool people and the fish tank we have to put water in that and get some fish and probably we'll do that in the next couple of weeks and a couple of paintings now so now we're looking um, uh, north toward the front door and these uh, the circle beyond that in the gazebo on crooked tree lane but if we turn left we come to a study which is going to be Karen's study, but it it has we, it still needs a lot of work, and um, it needs a light too. The, the light here in in um, the day room, at least the fixture is in, but the guy never put a light in, so we got to put a light in. So you got the day room there, and you've got oh, the light didn't go on. There it goes. What will be Karen's study, and it looks out on the back, and we have those really neat shutters everywhere. That's cool. And here's my Batumi painting, which I have to hang. That's that's from uh, the 1920s for a resort. You can see in the background that is on the Black Sea. Um, a little bit to the east of oh, pretty much to the east of where they held the Winter Olympics in Sochi, uh, but not quite to the uh, Caucasus, but that's cool. I like that a lot. I'm going to find a place to hang that in here and I still have a lot to do. Now we're looking out the study. Come on, autofocus. Well, there we go, toward the front of the house and the table and chairs. And you can see there's a light missing in this area too. So I've got to get an electrical guy to come in and do that light. Man, because this 94 year old has got his girlfriend and they left before they put lights in. I can't believe it. So if we continue toward, there's two neat paintings that were painted by either myself or Paul Gauguin. Many art experts will tell you it's often quite difficult to tell the difference. So I hung those going in toward bedroom number one, which is my bedroom, and we have this really cool mirror where you can look into the bedroom from outside. And if you're in the bedroom, you can, when you're walking out, you can look into the sunroom. So I can see myself if I'm in both places at once, which rarely happens anyway. So you walk in and I've got the, the two Turner reproductions here. And this is a bedroom and it's still a mess. And we have our last Eventoff hung up. And there's a bed that's almost made. And again, it looks out on the back. And you can see some shutters everywhere. There's the keyboard. And you can see, you can see, let me turn it. Yay, all the roses are back there. 
So you have a kind of nice view and it's nice and it's airy. And I've got my Sirius radio. We put, we're so small we had to put TVs on the walls. So we have TVs on the walls. So we had to throw, throw away our stands. And attached to this bedroom is, oh, and I got a couple really neat paintings over here. And I've got my fake flowers. And that's the Gates of Dawn by Draper. And I don't know who painted that, but I really like the composition. And then you've got a bathroom, which is kind of a mess at this point. And there's a toilet back there. And in the toilet, you have, I, I, I hung, I painted that myself. So I liked that. That was when I liked the sun. Now I don't like the sun quite so much. Um, I thought when I would get old that I'd really like the heat. I don't like the cold. Uh, that, that's one thing that uh, Raleigh has over Moscow. Moscow has really cold winters. Bummer. But they do have the KGB and the barrier purges and, and all that really good stuff. So anyway, I hung that in the bathroom when Charles gave me this which I hung under the sun, the sun to the flowers. And I think that's cool. But uh, anyway, so I don't like the cold and I don't like, I don't, I don't like the, the heat. I thought I would like the heat when I got old, but I don't. And so I was wrong. I, I was in error, but I've never been this old before. So I have no idea what I'm going to like and not like. And there's no bathroom, there's no bathtubs, but there are really neat showers. You can see the shower and where there's two showers, one for each bedroom with the, with the, with the, with the rainforest shower head. And each shower has a place you can sit or a place you can stand, and which makes it really cool if two people are taking a shower at the same time, assuming that they're not of the uh, same sex. It, 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 it helps because somebody can then clean your back while they're sitting down. So anyway, and then I have my Bay Ruth poster, and that's really cool, although Karen hates that. I really like this. This is from... Uh, the Beirut performances in uh, 1938 in Germany. It's very famous uh, because it was a real confrontation between the uh, symphony and Adolf Hitler. So it's kind of famous. So anyway, I like it. Karen doesn't like it. And we got a closet here. So this is the one bedroom. There's the really neat mirror again. And you walk out. And now you're, we're back in the main area. And if we continue, now we're heading toward the front again. We have another little bathroom here, leading off from the main room where I put all of our maps. So if you're standing here taking a pee, you can, you can check out maps. Oh, and my Cuba. But I haven't hung that straight. Is that better? A uh, little. And I have something over there. Anyway, this is really convenient for people. Whoa, don't get dizzy watching this. And there's the Rauschenberg again. And if you continue back one more, you come to... Oh, there's a there's a close more a close up of of the cot. We have two cots. C O T. You can look them up on Wikipedia. That was given to us by uh, Virginia, and this is the other room, and this is Karen's hideaway, and she has her pictures and vases and flowers, and she's got. Uh, 
Uh, she's got to clean this up. She's got a, a, a nice closet. And she's got her own bath, which she likes. And, and I haven't put anything up there yet. And the dog is hiding, I think. Say hi, dog. Because I yelled at him because he pooped this morning. Wow. There he is. Hey, Copernicus. He's sound asleep. Copernicus. Not Copernicus. Cashmere. Wake up. Wake up. Say hi. Hey, it's not coming out. Okay. So now you're looking from you're looking out the front you're looking out toward the main area so i've got a main area with the sunroom and a karen study in back and two bedrooms and if you walk this way out of the second bedroom you come to a small area where you do laundry and stuff and our relatively small garage where I still have a lot of work to do and Karen's new car it's really cool this is where Karen and the dog ride and I get to sit in the back but it's got this really neat sunroof you can't see it very well that goes all the way from the front to the back and we had to get rid of Two cars because we had three and we only have room in in here for uh, two and anyway that's that's the car it's a Kia Sorento and it has all kind of neat things and I hope that I these were supposed to go in I'm gonna have to check that I haven't run down the complete battery I don't dry this very much. It's too high tech for me. So anyway, you can walk in from the garage, in, whoops, in past the laundry area. And when you do that, if you go to the right, you go into Karen's room. I still have to put stuff up. And if you go left, you go into the main area. And if you're in the main area, if you go toward the back, you've got the sunroom and the study. And if you go to the front, you've got the, the uh, kitchen. And, and, and it has a, an electric oven. And I, I would love to have gas, but it's too much trouble and it costs too much to convert. And here's the cool umbrella stand. And here is the front. And this takes us back outside. And you can see more roses. And you can see one of my hibiscuses. Everything grows like crazy in North Carolina. And we are back out front where we started. And you can see the gazebo in the circle and the neighborhood. So we're back where we started. And that ends the tour. The end.